Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Cal23, back with another video. And today we are here with a tips video for you guys. Now, I have been asked many times this question, how do you go 12 and 0? Now, personally, I do have six 12 and 0s this year. You can see we have the five times banner and one 12 and 0. So six in total. And we also have one 24 and 0, which is back to back flawless runs. So had a lot of practice with BR. I know the ins and outs. And in this video, I'm gonna go over everything from the very beginning of your run to the very end, which is hopefully a flawless run. So for reference, uh, these are my stats this year. We have 354 games and we have six 12 and 0s, a 458 average and 7.34 ERA, but that's not really a surprise. You're gonna let up bombs in BR all day. The main purpose is really you're gonna be able to have to swing the bat and pitch as well as you can. And the first step to any BR run is, of course, drafting your team. 1,500 stubs to potentially make almost a million, depending on when you're drafting. Like Billy Wagner, he's still sitting at a big fat million, so there really is a lot on the line here in BR. This is where you can make stubs really, really easily. So, uh, yeah, let's hop into a draft. First round of this draft, and it is not looking too great. But here's the thing, this is actually a good example. A lot of people redraft quite a bit in BR and you really don't need to. It's one thing if you just enjoy the uh, the draft itself, you enjoy making a team, that's, that's something else. But if you're just trying to be a perfectionist and get that perfect team, it's just not gonna work all the time. There's 24 other rounds, you know, like it sucks that the high diamond round can be like this sometimes, but there's so many diamonds in the game that this, that this just happens sometimes. And honestly, I don't really know who I'm taking here. So the first thing to do in a scenario like this is find the guy that you have used. If you use no one, then obviously you can just look at stats, but I have used Jason Kendall quite a bit actually in, in events. I have like a 330 average. He's not bad. He's really not that bad. Then we got Alex Gordon's top now and Tony Gwynn's legend of the franchise. This may sound crazy to you, but I'm going to take Jason Kendall. I'm used to him. He's a solid catcher. He'll play well. Now let's quickly go over some do's and don'ts in Battle Royale Draft. Make sure you're keeping an eye on that top left, all right? That top left is important. Also, this, this lineup screen, the bullpen screen, you know, flip through them. Make sure you're not filling anything up too early. If you ever fill your lineup or your bullpen too early, it's just a big mistake and you're going to end up getting uh, certain cards that you just didn't want to end up with. So in a situation like this, there's not a lot of guys to pick from, but uh, Justin Smoke, definitely a good bench bat. He does have zero speed, but he's just there to hit nukes. Now, the more you play BR, the more familiar you are going to get with certain cards. Uh, like, for example, Bryce Harper, this card rakes. This card rakes to cover up the ball. 5'11 batting average and about 45 ABs. That's not bad at all. Um, I, I know he's the pick for me, but let's say you're new to this and you're like, all right, who is the pick here? And some people might lean towards starters and relievers. And the thing about relievers for me is they, they get they, their energy drains like that. It is just gone almost instantaneously for some of these guys. So you really have to be smart about who you take. But this is easily Bryce Harper. There is no debate in my mind. That is Bryce Harper. Now, this next round is actually a good one to talk about. We have someone like J.D. Martinez, right? He rakes the cover off the ball, but cannot play defense. He just cannot in this game. Like, that, that is not going to cut it. And then you have a guy like Chris Bassett, who's got that sinker and that cutter, and he can be a pretty solid starter. That's why I'm going to take him, because he's got the meta pitches. You know, you might, you might think you want to go to J.D., but in this situation, it makes sense to go to someone like Bassett. Outfield defense is actually a really nice bonus to have, man. Like, it's very important that you're making sure you get at least one good outfielder that can, like, really play well, especially if it's your center fielder. Because if you don't, you know, like, the odds of... It's gonna hurt you, basically, is what I'm saying. Because if you try to go 12-0 without a good outfield, at some point in the run, it's gonna hurt you. You know, it, you might be able to have it not hurt you as bad if you score a ton, and, you know, like, they make an error, but you're up, like, 10. So it really depends on how much you trust your hitting, um, because if you don't trust it as much, you might want to get better fielders. This round is easy for me. I knew it when I saw it. This pick is Ian Happ, a switch hitting outfielder with goal defense. This card's going to rake the cover off the ball, bro. Ian Happ has such a glitchy swing and glitchy swings are very important. Like at the end of the day, overalls are overalls, you know, stats are stats, but glitchy swings, man, they just, they, they are powerful. Same with glitchy windups. They, they really are powerful. And they just make a big impact right there. Uh, those two picks right there are pretty simple for me. Yohan Moncada and Adam Wainwright. Wainwright has the sinker. And Moncada is just another switch hitter that rakes. This next round right here, we have Tim Miza. Now, why I'm going to draft him is because I believe, I'm pretty sure of this, but I think he has a submarine 
uh, wind up. If I'm wrong, I feel dumb, but if he does have a submarine wind up, that is great value out of a 71 bronze. Now, this next round is just kind of a rough one because you have two hitters that aren't crazy. I mean, 12 speed on Kano with solid attributes, nothing crazy. Trammel, not really much power on the righties. That definitely hurts. David Price, he's got the fastball slider change up so you know solid and th this guy right here he's got um he's got the two seam the cutter which you know it's nice seeing the cutter but for me personally right here i'm gonna secure a solid lefty in the pen we have another round right here where i don't want to end up wasting any picks like i don't want to take another outfielder yet i don't want to take another reliever so i'm just gonna take a starter because i already have two very good starters for br at least that are gonna get it done so i'm gonna just waste a waste a pick I bat 706 with David Dahl, so that one should be pretty simple. We're just going to take him. That'll complete our outfield. Tyler Clippard, really, really good budget guy. Rubenet Rube Odor is a great bench bat, but I'd rather take Clippard right here for the value that he's going to bring me out of the pen. Um, but Clippard is pretty solid. I mean, he's actually really nice for what he is. So now would be a good time, guys, to make sure I'm pausing and checking my lineup to see what I need. Because you never want to do, like, you don't want to make a, a mistake that you could have avoided, right? Like, you don't want to draft more than four lefties in your lineup because then the right-left switch up, the matchups won't work for you, basically. So you can see I have two lefties, we have two switch hitters, sorry, three switch hitters. I said two because Smoke is most likely going to be on the bench. And then we have Jason Kendall. So what I really need to do here is draft a righty. So ideally, like, a Paul DeYoung kind of guy at short, something like that. I'm going to take Rich Hill, almost as a waste pick because I didn't want to take any of the fielders right there. Uh, Fromber, ooh, this is the, I thought this was a reliever card, uh, cause he has the postseason one, but this is actually his starter card. It's a lefty. I think we're going to take it and finish off the rotation. Another round where there's nothing too special. I kind of want to wait on the pen, but it's getting to the point where I don't really know what the, the smartest move is because I think anything I could do here could potentially hurt me, but that's just what BR is. Sometimes the rounds don't work in your favor, but I'm going to take Nick Senzel. Hopefully it works out a common round here. Oh, I don't really know what to do, dude. This isn't great. Trevor got, he's got the sinker. He's got, he's got the pitch mix for a common. So I'll take him, but that's it. The bullpen's got to be uh, lights out from here on out. We get Mondesi. So another switch hitter. I actually don't know if this is the smart move. I bat like a humble 316 with them. That's nothing crazy. So I think I'm going to lean towards Emilio Pagan in this situation because he's got that nice cutter and fastball, but I don't know, man. This one's not easy, but I want to kind of, I, I want to, I kind of want to risk, risk it. You know, I want to try to get someone better. Uh, Simmons is definitely not that guy. I'm going to take guy goes right here. Pretty easy pick for me. I like him out of the bullpen, makes our bullpen way stronger. And there, <laughs> there it is, man. I, I risked it. And we literally get my favorite shortstop to draft in BR. This is kind of a throwaway round. So now you guys can see I have my lineup complete, right? My lineup is complete. Now we have five bench spots, and you kind of have to evaluate, what do I need? So I need a first baseman, I need a second baseman. So two out of my five bench spots, I have to have open for that uh, purpose. So right here, there's nothing to really draft. I'm not taking relievers, so I'm going to take Jesus Sanchez just to play as a bench bat. And uh, most of these guys are going to be bench bats. This guy has the most speed, so we're going to take him. But um, I do have to realize, though, that I have two bronze rounds and one silver so i might have to start justin smoke or nick senzel which isn't the end of the world but not ideal dj stewart has some pop we're gonna take him and now we're at the point where you guys can see we have two spots left so we have to make a smart decision here the bullpen uh in terms of strong players we have david price clippard pagan and Geigo. So that's four that's four really strong guys bassett and wainwright are pretty strong and so is hill i mean he throws it really slow but i mean it's all star so i could afford going with the uh the lineup guy but we need a second baseman or a first baseman so i could say colt wong or rowdy telez now rowdy telez does bat 167 for me but it's in 12 at bats so i can't judge that too harshly and i have not used colton wong yet this year so this might not be the smartest way to use my bronze or sorry my silver round here so um someone like brandon Mora, who i've used before and he does have a six yard right but like everyone has that um he's got the cutter he's got the slider and the fastball so i'm gonna take him and finish out our bullpen to make it kind of strong and yeah we're gonna end it like that we're gonna take another guy for speed and then let's see what our last round is oh my this is a very good last round um so miguel sano and daniel vogel back so if i'm looking at my team here if i take vogel back to start at first which i've done before i've actually gone 12 and 0 with this card in my lineup the thing is if i take him that's three lefties and then I have a couple righties, but they're not the strongest righties. 
what I could do is take Miguel Sano and put Moncada to second, or De Young to second, actually. Either way, I wanted to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. Miguel Sano's unreal. Uh, he is a bronze now, but uh, he's very good. So I don't think it's going to hurt me too much. Vision doesn't really impact it, uh, him too bad. So that's a very good value right there in our last round. And let's build this team. All right, guys. So this is the team we have right here. This was just one draft, by the way. Like for this video, I made sure that I wasn't going to redraft at all because I wanted to show you guys just one draft. We hop in and you can see what we can do. Like I didn't want to like redraft 100 times, get the best team possible. That's not the point. The point is to make the best of what you get out of, you know, BR. Obviously, you, you can redraft. It's not, like, forbidden. But for the most part, you don't need to that much. Like, you really don't need to, man, you know? You can get a pretty solid team on the first couple goes, and uh, you should be able to go 12-0 and with it at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like, it, it really does come down to your gameplay and how good you are at just, you know, hitting, hitting bombs when it matters. But yeah, guys, hopefully this draft segment helped. Uh, this was just a fresh draft right here. So we are now going to hop on to the second part of this video. Now I'm going to go over a team build. This actually be a different team that we're going to analyze and talk about because I've actually, I've actually recorded this part last. So we're going to go to the next section and we're going to talk about a team building. Okay, so now that you've drafted your team, the next part that we're going to be talking about here is your team building the lineup. It's very important once you've drafted your team to set your team in the right order to give yourself the best chance for success. Now let me start this off by saying everyone has their own personal preference. You might like a card that someone else like hates. So you do have to kind of know yourself when ordering a team, but there are some general rules to follow. Now for the most part, your leadoff guy should be a glitchy card. It should not be your high diamond. Your high diamond, you want guys on. Your leadoff guy, your goal for your leadoff guy is to essentially just hit a nuke. Just get that run right on the board immediately. Your high diamond should really be to two or three in the order, all right? It should really be up there. You want him to get as many at-bats as possible. You have nine outs in BR, so you don't want him low in the order so that he only gets one at-bat. You know, you want him to get as many as possible, but when he comes up, you also want him to have the opportunity to knock guys in. So you can see, for my team, I have Bo Bichette batting third. And also, I do highly recommend taking a diamond um, like infield or outfield like you need to get a hitter basically because pitching is it's just not as important in BR for the most part like a, a good hitter is gonna light up anyone but you might be able to do more damage with Bo Bichette than you would like a bronze shortstop or something now for the most part you are not going to want to draft more than four lefties by doing this it's gonna be an imbalance in the right left shift and you don't want to do that you don't want to give your opponent an easy decision as to who to bring in now, as you guys know, there is a new three batter minimum rule this year. It's kind of changed the way BR works and it's very important to remember it. So basically what you want to keep in mind is that the majority of people are probably going to consider switching their pitcher at the four hole spot. So you look at my team, right? And if my opponent is starting a righty, they are most likely going to switch to a lefty for these three, right? They're most likely going to do that. And the reason I'm okay with it is because for some reason this, this Daniel Murphy goes uh, lefty lefty for me so for me it's actually not a bad thing if my opponent goes to a lefty because I have Hoskins as well like those are things you have to anticipate when you're building your lineup so the four hole hitter is most likely going to have the new pitcher coming in so um you kind of want to plan for that but let's say it was the other way around the last example I gave was if a right hander was starting let's say it was a left hander he keeps him in but now his energy is kind of like depleted a little bit right and maybe that confidence is shot a little bit maybe it hit like a home run or something and now he thinks, oh, I'll just, I'll just get him through this at bat. We go deep, and then he puts himself in a, in a bit of a predicament with the rest of the order now. Now that he's already wasted like a couple pitches that he shouldn't have thrown. Um, so that is pretty much my basics on the lineup. Also, keep in mind on who's on your bench. So I don't want it to be like I have Jock Peterson right eighth. If I have only lefties on the bench, that means I have three lefties in a row essentially. But I don't. I have Todd Frazier, and I can go to him. If my opponent went to a lefty there um, you do want to avoid that as well because you don't ever want your opponent to have three straight pitches uh, versus someone who's not or on the same same handedness you don't want that that's just an advantage that you don't need to give him you can avoid it and maybe if your draft is that bad just re redraft um, you can definitely get a good team in a couple redrafts you don't need to do uh, like hundreds of redrafts you can you, it, it takes a couple it's not that bad now let's talk about searching. In this year's game, there is a lot of things you can do with searching. So when you go to search, you obviously get your little stadium pick, you select your stadium, time of day, 
and you go right to this screen. So depending on what your uh, record is, your bar is either probably going to go a long way or a short way. I'm 2-0, I found an opponent instantly. But let's say you're 11-0. You are going to want a 100% play home, and you're going to want that bar to go all the way across, all the way. And you're also going to want to make sure you're home because it's a three-inning game and home field is crucial. If you don't know how to tell if you're home away, when you're in this menu, on the left stick, just go up and down a couple times. If there is lag, like there is right now, you are the away team. If there is no lag, you are the home team. Now, some people don't like to home hunt, and that's perfectly okay. It is three inning games at the end of the day. So if you're good enough, you can just, you know, be the away team, score at the start of the game, and win that way. But it, when you play away, you know, you, you make it so that your opponent gets to pick the stadium and some people are weird some people play at some really weird stadiums and it's not even their fault the stadiums it would be great if all stadiums played well but at the end of the day the, the stadiums that play the best in this video game are minor league stadiums also some people might tell you it matters at what time of day that goons are on you don't don't you know you don't need to worry too much about goons and stuff like you, you might have to face a goon you don't need to dodge people too much i mean like at the end of the day if you're trying to go flawless, you're going to probably play a good player. That's just the reality of it. So just, you know, play whenever you're free. Some people try to play it like the middle of the night. Like, just play when you're free, guys. Also, when you find your opponent, you absolutely do not want to judge anything they have, which is their record or their uh, XP. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about their banner. Because at the end of the day, it's a three-inning game on All-Star. Anything can happen. And the final thing I want to touch upon here in this searching section is that you guys should really take note of your opponent's lineup when you guys match up when you guys match up there's a lot of things to think about when you're facing your opponent and one of the things you can do uh, when the game starts is you can go to the pause menu and tap square and then r1 to see your opponent's bench you could potentially look for platoons and stuff like that like you don't want to play right into his hand uh if he go if he possibly goes to a bench bat and then you switch and then he goes to a different bench bat that's better you know you want to take notes of those kind of things so that you're prepared for any situation. Now this next section, I'm just gonna be, I, I called it extra in my notes because it's just kind of other things that I wanted to touch upon that I still think are important that some people might need help with. I highly, highly recommend you guys to play these runs out. If you wanna go 12 and 0, play it out in either one or two sittings. It's very important to keep your momentum going. Taking breaks does not help. It really does not help. Like. If you go 9-0 and and take a break, you come back, you're going to be a different player, and you just might not be ready, you know? You don't you don't have a full nine innings to, to bounce back and see your opponent's tendencies. You have three innings, you have to show up when the game starts. So I highly recommend um, playing it out in one or two sittings. Maybe you do half and half, maybe you do, uh, you get three in the first and then like nine in the second, like whatever is comfortable for you. Now obviously you don't have to do that, I just think it's been... Uh, uh, something that I always do when I go 12 and 0, it always just seems to work that way. It always works out. You know, I'm just used to the all-star pitch speeds. I have all the swings down. Like I'm just, I have my lineup memorized. Like it's just, it's good to go and I'm just ready to win. Something not a lot of people talk about is getting sweaty. Like literally, if you guys don't know, if you guys have been on my Twitch channel, you know, but I literally have a towel right next to me. I use this. I, I put it on the controller sometime, the stick. Uh, if it's like, you know, I've been using it like all day. It's not a bad idea because sometimes especially with analog pitching, you know, your thumb is just flicking all kinds of crazy places that you don't want it to be, and uh, it's going to cost you runs. So honestly, having something like this, it's not the worst idea, especially if you think you might need it. Now, this next part is very specific, but I don't think a lot of people take advantage of it, and that's if you draft a very specific kind of team. Like, let's say your outfield is goaded. It has three diamond shield defenders. For the most part, in BR, most people will not have those kind of teams. I have Jorge Soler in right, Jock in center, and Reese in left. Their bats are amazing, the gloves, not too much. The point I'm trying to make is you want to play to your team's strength sometimes. I mean, for the most part, I'm going to play every game at Chip It, but this is something you could do. Like, if you have a diamond outfield, like I was saying, you might want to play somewhere where, like, the gaps are larger so that your guys get to it and your opponents don't. Maybe if your team can absolutely rake the ball so you know they're going to hit a home run in any stadium, but you don't have pitching, maybe play it somewhere like Capital where the ball doesn't fly as much. Try to play to your team's strengths if you want to. I mean, for the most part, I'm going to play every game at Ship It, like I said, but 
um, you know, you might want to do it. It's not a bad idea if you want to try to mix things up, especially if you don't like playing at ship at every game. All right, so now that we have drafted our team, we have set our lineup, we are ready to actually play some ball. And in this section, we're going to go over all the gameplay tips I got for you guys. Step number one, have confidence. You got to believe in yourself to win. If you go into a game thinking you're going to lose after you see a record or something like that, that's just you're already starting off at a disadvantage you don't need to start with. You know what I mean? That's your choice. A good mindset is going to lead to a lot better gameplay. When you're hopping into All-Star, you, all, you might not think you need a warm-up, but it's honestly not a terrible idea. Like, for the most part, most people have no trouble catching up to All-Star. It's pretty slow for the most part. Actually, the main issue is swinging out in front, being very early. So, um, it's not the worst idea to warm up, especially if you're coming into a run for the second half of it. Like, if you're 6-0 or something. You might want to go into custom practice. Just take some swings, you know? Just get the PCI warm, get ready to, you know, see the baseball. Be prepared for All-Star Madness, because All-Star Madness is crazy, like, especially if you're at Chip It, like, stupid home runs are gonna leave, blue pits are gonna happen, be prepared for it, and just be ready to fight through it, be ready to come back, don't worry about that kind of stuff, man, it can only hurt you if you let it. Now, while BR games may only be three innings, you still have a chance to pick up on your opponent's tendencies. Um, depending on the pitcher you have, if you have a breaking pitch or like you have a cutter or something that he doesn't want to swing at, try to notice it, see what he can't hit, see what he's successful with. Like if you throw an up and in fastball to the first batter of the game and he perfect perfects that, like he turns on that thing, crushes it, maybe you don't go too much inside for the next couple of batters, you know, see how he does with off speeds away, uh, cutters away, like stuff like that, you know, try to pick up on as many uh, tendencies as possible. Now, when it comes to your starting and relievers, it's very important that you guys know who you're going to want to go to. Because when you guys are pitching, obviously you guys know it's very difficult. Like, ah, oh, who do I pitch and how do I pitch? It's very important to know who to bring in uh, at certain times. For the most part, you're going to have a couple solid starters, a couple solid relievers. But based on the score, based on your run, you're going to want to bring in certain guys. If you're 0-0, do not start your best guy. You're wasting it. For the most part, you're going to probably play someone not as good. But... At the same time, you also don't want to waste your diamond guys. You don't want to start a bad pitcher, let up a ton of runs, and then your diamond guy is worthless. So there's a there's a balance that you have to control. My recommended way is what I this is what I usually do. I usually go to my, my second best starter game one. And then game two, I go to my best starter. And then game three, I go to like a mediocre reliever. And then game four, I go back to that second starter. And I kind of just like I, I kind of like go with that, but depending on energy levels, I might mix it up. Maybe I'll have three good starters in a run. Maybe I'll have four. Maybe my bullpen is really strong. It depends on your team, um, on who you're going to bring in, but it is very important to know uh, who to bring in. Don't be willy-nilly. It's important. It matters. Continuing off pitching, do not pitch with a guy that has dead confidence. All right? If your confidence is gone, the pitcher might as well come out. It's three innings. It's going to be tough to get, the, get it back up. Like, anything decently pieced up is going to be gone, so... For the most part, uh, low confidence and red energy is just a big no-no. Something else to keep note of, uh, never use the quick menu to bring in a reliever. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes you use the quick menu and the reliever comes in on the yellow. Yes, I know it's stupid, but it happens. Go to a mound visit, go to the bullpen, and then bring them in. It will not happen. During the game, you might need a break. And if you do, pause the game. You have time. It's honestly not the worst idea to freeze your opponent sometimes. And I don't mean like freeze the game. I mean like freeze them in a term like, let's say he just hit back-to-back -back home runs. Pause the game for a minute. Take a deep breath. And then come back, recharge, and ready to go. And he was just really on, he was on fire. And now he's got to try to, you know, keep that going. So it, it might, it might uh, hurt him a little bit if, if you pause the game just to give yourself a, a break. Oh, and obviously, don't be, like, a jerk with the pause menu. Like, you know, you can use it for certain points, but don't, like, abuse it, you know? Just use it when you need to and when you think it's right. This is very important. Never, ever settle for a lead. If you score five in the first, that's awesome, but your opponent has nine outs to score a whole lot more runs than that. Never be like, oh, you know, this, this lead's good. No, you gotta keep scoring until they quit or the game is over. Like, do not let up. Show no mercy. You don't want to get, like, a lead blown costing you hours of a BR run. Vice versa, never give up. Your opponent might do what he shouldn't do, 
and that's be complacent with a lead. Maybe you let up like seven in the first, but you're the home team. So you have time to slowly, slowly, slowly come back and walk the game off because he didn't hit as well in the top half of the second and the third. So never give up, guys. You are, you are never out of a game. And yeah, that wraps up the gameplay segment. Uh, those were the main things I wanted to focus on. Uh, those were the things that came to my mind first when I was writing down all these notes. I do have notes right here that I'm not just spitballing all this stuff. I do. I wrote some notes down for you guys so that I could get the best information possible. And finally, this is probably one of the biggest points. I have played in countless 11-0 games. Countless crucial games with everything on the line. Your most important thing in that clutch time is, of course, your gameplay, but also your mindset. Your mindset is so important. Personally, I know for a fact, if something happens, like let's say a late week loop single that leads to a home run, right? That's frustrating. But let's say there is one more out to get in the inning and I'm up by one and I get frustrated and I keep like talking about how what just happened was annoying instead of locking in, locking down the last out. My opponent comes back, takes the lead. That's the kind of thing you guys need to avoid. It's very easy to get frustrated at BR, to blame the game, to blame a card, to blame whatever you want to blame, but you just have to stay calm. I have found most success when I'm just at peace with what's happening. Like you just have to understand it's three innings, it's all star stupid stuff is gonna happen it's just gonna happen and you're just gonna have to you know try to bounce back from it maybe make a rally out of it do what you need to do to win each game but maybe your issue isn't uh getting angry getting upset maybe it's just straight up nerves because i have i have had games where my hands are shaking not really in br more in tournaments but still if this happens to you in br here's what you can do two words deep breaths it helps immensely actually just kind of like holding in your breath for a couple seconds and then letting it out, just focusing on your breath is actually very important. It's going to make you calm down. Seriously, your hands are probably not going to shake as much and you're going to be able to either put your PCI where you need to do it or hit your spot probably better than you would have before. All right, guys. So I think that about wraps up this video. That's everything I wanted to cover. Hopefully it helps you out. Let me know in the comments if you have any more questions. I'd love to answer them. But besides that, Thank you guys for watching. Of course, as you guys could tell, this is the first video with the new setup. We have the new camera. It's, it, it's awesome. I can't wait for the future. Lots of cool videos to come. So if you aren't already, make sure to subscribe down below. And uh, yeah, without further ado, I'll see you guys next video. Peace out.